We both watched Aaron being taken out in the climactic conclusion to assault Titan, putting an end to the rumble and permanently killing the Titans, but is this what happened in this brief video? I'll show all of the proof that Aaron is still alive, but his destiny is far worse. The conclusion of attack on Titan led us to assume that Aaron had permanently defeated the Titan powers. A desperate attempt to break the cycle of hatred, but one detail calls this into question. As Mikasa holds up Aaron's detached head, the Titan shifter marks remain on Aaron's face, while all of the other Titan shifters have reverted completely back to normal, with no trace of Titan shifter marks on their faces. Mappa and Ima are extremely fastidious, with an eye for detail that would not allow anything as important as this to go unnoticed. There's simply no way Mikasa could have gotten Aaron's head halfway around the world to his burial location before it decayed, implying the Titan's healing abilities was at work. We know Aaron has been dishonest and deceitful since he got to Marley. He's not beyond deceiving the rest of the world and his buddies. Aaron, I suppose, wants the world to believe that the Titans have been eradicated for good in the biggest lie ever perpetrated in human history. So, what exactly happened? Then, I believe Aaron has become the next Amir, patiently waiting for another vessel to steer the world to a better place or, at the very least, to bring him closer to his never-ending quest for freedom. One day, Amir was captured as a slave and forced to work for King Fritz. In her darkest sorrow, she released a pig escape from its confinement and was cruelly punished. She ascended to titanic power. She worked for King Fritz, assisting him in expanding and prospering and even taking a spear for him. She eventually offered her life to defend him, losing her desire to live and choosing to die. She was deprived a childhood and a personal life. She did it all out of love for King Fritz. Aaron was born into a planet enslaved by the Titans and spent his boyhood pursuing their abolition. In his greatest misery, he invoked the Titans' might and proceeded to expand the wisdom and power of the Island of Paradise via his demon-like hunger for freedom. He, like Amir, opted to let go in the end and allow himself to be vanquished. Aaron survived to battle the Titans and died to ensure that his allies had long lives. Aaron and Ayer were both deprived of their own lives. Ayer obtained her power after falling under a mystery tree that resembles the one that grows at Aaron's burial place. This is a recurring pattern. Iyama has authored a narrative that spans thousands of years in the world's history books. According to legend, Amir forged a contract with the demon of all earth. Isn't it exactly what Aaron had turned into? We see a huge lar tree on both sides of the image of Air making a bargain with the devil, signifying some kind of existential cycle. Amir survived as the god of the paths. They endured and labored for 2,000 years, deluded by her misplaced love for her captor crafting titans one by one and serving as a sort of gatekeeper to the terrible force of the rumbling. It took her 2,000 years to find the release she needed. Aaron, I suppose, will suffer the same fate, lying dormant and waiting for someone to assist him in achieving the genuine freedom he's always desired. Aaron's liberation during the rumble was not a transient feeling. It was a true and permanent freedom. Given that Aaron was represented as a youngster at the time, it might be claimed that it was all a delusion. Aaron still longs for full independence. He explicitly declared that in order to attain freedom, he will deprive the world of freedom. Aaron's death only to have paradise destroyed by world strife does not seem like true freedom. Amir had been waiting for someone to save her from the torment of her love for thousands of years. Aaron will seek someone who can either assist him in fulfilling his ravenous longing for independence or liberate him from this never-ending chase. When this innocent youngster was severely punished for rescuing an animal, she fell into a huge tree, where a mysterious creature provided her hope in her darkest hour. Despite the worldwide battle, the huge tree that grew over Aaron's burial location has stayed intact. Aaron has transformed into this monster in order to share his power with a single individual in their darkest hour. The image of a phoenix reinforces this viewpoint. In the Season 4 Part 1 outro, a burning phoenix morphs into a gigantic tree, signifying how Aaron, in his never-ending desire of freedom, will become the entity that offers power to the next tragic soul. Why would Aaron do this when the bird at the end of the scarf wraps around me? Masasa implies that he is omnisciently gazing over the elders. Aaron is, without a doubt, dissatisfied with how things turned out. He annihilated 80% of the world. The global struggle persisted. Despite his attempts, the ideal island was devastated. He was never physically able to go across the world with Armin, and maybe the saddest of all, he died a virgin. 
The roots have been built as a location where there is no death and Aaron may conceivably continue to live on top of this. It's worth noting that Air has the ability to bring Aaron back if she so desires. Even when Zeke unleashed the lightning spear at point-blank range, Amir reconstructed his body in the roots. Aaron was the only one who seemed to understand her, so she gave him complete control. If he can see the consequences of Ain's decisions, it stands to reason that she would wish to affect the future as well. So, what did Amir get out of the rumbling? We were taught to believe that Amir caused the rumbling in order to exact retribution on the world for what she was forced to endure. This, I suppose, is correct, but there is more to it. I feel that living forever as a slave within the roots is an excruciating sentence for Amir, and she hopes Eren could take her place. It should be noted that in both the anime and manga, the small kid of Historia appears immediately after Air vanishes. This might imply that Air was aware that she would be given a second shot at life after Eren took her place in the roots. Eren's destiny is worse than death since he must live in eternal remorse for the heinous crimes he's done knowing that it was all for naught in the end because the island of paradise was destroyed all by itself. Aaron must carry the shame and sorrow for the lives he has killed, as well as an intolerable vacuum for all he has not been able to do in his existence. Aaron most certainly need a human vessel to initiate a fresh cycle in order to get a better outcome. This time, Aaron has been waiting for what seems like an eternity for someone to release him from his guilt and maybe change the fate of mankind. We all know that Attack on Titan isn't over. Because of the series' phenomenal economic success, a continuation is quite conceivable. This begs the question, would you risk creating brand new characters or perhaps a completely new plot for us? The most likely possibility is unsettling. Eren is still alive and has preserved Titan's power. After everything we've seen so far, Mikasa's famed CUU later also supports the concept of an existence. This isn't her final farewell. She may be alluding to the afterlife, but something about it strikes strange, especially given Eren's history. The concept that Eren is still alive and has preserved Titan's abilities would let the series to continue in a logical manner while also allowing for one hell of a trailer. You won't want to miss my next video, which will go over all of the possible situations for the upcoming season of Attack on Titan. Everyone, I'll see you later.